Hello friends, this video on perimeter and area part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we know how to find out area of a parallelogram, rectangle, square, can, can you guess how can we find out the area of a triangle? Now obviously it's written on the screen that the area of the triangle would be half the area of a parallelogram. Why so? That's because whenever you look at a parallelogram, you would see that a diagonal will always divide a parallelogram into two triangles. Let's say if you draw a diagonal like this. So this uh, diagonal would divide this parallelogram into two triangles. This is triangle 1, this is triangle 2. So triangle 1 and 2. Now when you look at it very closely, you would see that these two triangles are again congruent. How are they congruent? That's because this side is equal to this side, which are opposite sides of parallelogram. Similarly, this side is equal to this side, which is which are again opposite sides of parallelogram. And this is a common side. So by side, side, side congruence, these two triangles would be congruent. Now since triangle 1 and triangle 2 are congruent, that means area of triangle 1 will be equal to area of triangle 2, right? So the area of this triangle will be equal to area of this triangle. What does that mean? That means that area of one of these triangles would be half of the area of this parallelogram. So that is what we said here, that area of a triangle is half of area of a parallelogram. And what is area of a parallelogram? We, we just now derived in the previous slide that area of a parallelogram is base into height. So therefore, what is the area of a triangle? Area of a triangle is half into base into height. So let us name this parallelogram and let us try to find out the areas of the two triangles. Let's say this ABCD is a parallelogram. So if I ask you to find out the area of triangle ABD. So what would be the area of triangle ABD? So now this area of triangle ABD, this triangle would be half into base into height. So which one do you want to consider as the base here? So either you can consider AB as base or you can consider AD as base. Let's say that we consider AB as the base. So if AB is the base, in that case, what would be height? Height would be the perpendicular drawn on AB. AB means either AB or extended arm of AB. So if you draw a perpendicular on AB from the opposite side, which is this side. So this is how the perpendicular is. Let's say this is E. So half into base into height would be DE. So in this way, you can find out the area of triangle ABD. Now, how about area of triangle BCD? So in this case also the same thing half into base. So in this case if you assume this is the base that is CD then what would be the height? The perpendicular which is drawn on CD from the opposite side. So what is that perpendicular? It could be this perpendicular drawn from B on this side. Let's say this is F, so this would be CD into BF. So in this way you can find out the area of the triangles. Now let us assume that for the same parallelogram if you divide it in this fashion let's say this is your parallelogram so i'm just drawing a rough diagram just to explain you let's say instead of this diagonal if you divide this parallelogram like this so in that case you have a b c d so you have triangle a b c and triangle a c d so what would be the area of triangle a b c so in this case, let us assume that BC is the base. So half into base that is BC at height would be perpendicular drawn on BC from the opposite vertex. So let us call this A. So this would be AE. Similarly, what would be the area of triangle ACD? That would again be half into base into height. So let us say the base here is AD. So what would be the height? A perpendicular which is drawn on AD. That is the base from the opposite vertex. So let us call this point as F. So this would be half into AD into CF. So in this pattern, we find out the area of a triangle which is given by half into base into height. 
So now when we talk about triangles, you might be thinking that in case of triangles, we have many different types of triangles. Like we have certain triangles which are right angle triangle, that is they have a right angle within them. Some triangles are scalene triangles where all the sides are of different length. Sometimes some triangles are equilateral ones where all the sides are equal. So now this formula of, to find out the area of a triangle, will it hold true for all types of triangles? Well, this formula holds true for any type of triangle. Do you know why? That's because if you look at any triangle, you would see that if you take a mirror image of that triangle and place them in front of each other, they make a parallelogram. Because how did we derive the formula for area of triangle? We just derived it saying that it is half the area of parallelogram. So this relationship between a triangle and a parallelogram holds true for all types of triangles. So here on the screen, you see three different types of triangles. So one is a right angle triangle, like th this one is a right angle triangle. So one is a scalene triangle, the other one is an isosceles triangle. So we have variety of triangles here. And for each of these, you would notice their mirror image. So for this triangle, so this would be the mirror image, right, which, which will coincide with this part, but at the same time, it is laterally inverted, like, like as you see here. So this is the mirror image. Now, when you look at this overall uh, diagram, what it is, it is nothing but a parallelogram. Similarly, look at this one. So here also, if you take mirror image of this triangle, you see that the two triangles make a parallelogram. And the same holds true here as well. So this is also a parallelogram. So you see opposite sides are equal and parallel. So this is also a parallelogram. So since every triangle and its mirror image makes a parallelogram, therefore the formula of triangle that is half into base into height holds true for all types of triangles. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.